Should be going. It's live. Good evening. I'd like to call our July 13th regular Board of Education meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number two is motion to excuse board members. All are present. Item number three is our open meetings law. That's posted in the back of our room. We will follow the protocol as directed. Item number four is our consent agenda. It includes our regular minutes of the June 15th uh, retreat workshop, as well as our July July 11th, June 15th, the workshop was July 11th. Uh, our financial reports and our monthly bills. Are there any questions? I have a couple. <laughs> if you could find out for me, I saw a fairly hefty bill to Ralston Public Schools for two quarters for hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember ever seeing that before, so I wondered if we just had a new student or why we were paying, and whether it was actually for a student or whether it was for interpreter services or what it was for. Because it was for Ralston Public School. Mm -hmm. Look into that tonight. Yeah, I'll look into it to so make sure I give you accurate information. And then I also had a question about the health curriculum. When did did we approve when did we I mean as a curriculum committee, I don't even remember even approving curriculum material for my quarter six or twelve health curriculum. So um, I would just have a question. Okay. And relative to the six or twelve curriculum council, when you redesigned the uh, middle school schedule and we added another elective in there, they had to buy some curriculum material and so then they aligned it with the um, with the, the ninth grade as well. So you're right, I don't know that it did go in front of the curriculum committee. So that's something that stayed on the table. And it was more of a uh, it was a fairly uh, low cost it, because it's not the whole type of curriculum that you would see with a language art or that, but it still is curriculum. Well I knew that that was one of them that they were going to be redoing the standards and then they took that off and so I I was surprised to see it apply in curriculum. Yeah, we had no, um, we had nothing to, to teach those um, elective courses that we had to do all the resources. Okay, good. Thanks, Captain. What question that I had deals with the um, tax call, and um, it appears that this year our percentage of uh, people paying their tax bill is lower than it has been. We were worried early on this year, if you watched the trend line of that, um, they were a little worried early on, and then you notice it caught up in the last few months, it went back down this month, but last month we were right on target, so I'm not worried about it, and I think we'll come back up in, in, in our uh, July, or July and August. So I think we'll be fine, and we've seen that variance throughout the course of this year. So it's a good formality. I cannot make it that. Um, that was out the money or where else was yeah. that? Yeah. Um, uh, the concrete work was done. Um, the drive, the the, oh, the drain, the, the two drain areas, one coming up the drive and then the other one on the um, very south side of the south parking lot of the high school. And then there's two patches in that south parking lot that got repaired. But the bulk of that bill was over here on the concourse and parking area in front of the football stadium. All that handicapped parking was um, concrete and then um, more of the concourse area going into that stadium. Is that how it's getting paid? Is that right? Mm -hmm. We're paying 25%. Well, we paid 50% so far. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we paid 25%. Yeah, you wanted 25 up front. And then the work's completed, they go to the 10% right, and then the last bill will be. 
minor parts from other drinking fountain supplies? Well, in this um, uh, high school gym uh, competition gym, um, you may have noticed on the directions, the uh, east wall, the wall back toward the stage, we had some old um, obsolete drinking fountains that were no longer functional or in use. And Jared is putting new fountains in those and um, sealing up the holes that we don't use and um, so making the fountains. Anything else? Is there a motion? I move. Second. Roll call, please. Dr. Gould? Yes. Mr. Burgrace? Yes. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Mrs. Berglund? Yes. Mr. Lenny? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Motion carries. Item number five, correspondence and recognition. Uh, Superintendent Johnson. Yeah, yeah. A couple, there's a couple of things I'd like to know um, to, for the board and for the public. Uh, we, I want to make sure and recognize and congratulate the, two, the three students who qualified for a national FLA contest and then participated in NLC in Chicago. And um, and we had two uh, placers at uh, NLC, which honestly um, is quite an accomplishment. Uh, there are kids from obviously all over our country, actually also Canada and. China. Um, and uh, so to get on the stage and be in the top 10 there is a, 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 just a tremendous accomplishment. And we had a good number of Nebraska kids in that position, but out of the 100, a couple of uh, 100, well, 300 and some plus that went, there were probably only 30 on the stage. And so um, that's, that's really good because you've already made it to that stage. So congratulations to Ashley Long, who uh, placed six in cybersecurity. Sarah Laney, who plays fifth in introductions to parliamentary procedures. And then uh, Rosalie Javerti did an excellent job competing. She was competing in two events, introductions to FBLA and annual chapter report. So we're very proud of our students. And then the second thing, um, I just wanted to highlight for you, uh, some, some of our kids joined Mrs. Gill on a trip to Peru. And whereas this really isn't a school-sponsored event, because we don't have anything to do with it financially or otherwise, they've always provided the board with the report um, because it is through the curriculum that their interest is developed, and uh, and we do allow them to you know to talk to parents and kids on our uh, on our on our property about the trip. And so I think while it's not necessarily sponsored by us, and um, they're just appreciative that we might give them that that body that little bit of latitude that we do. And so attached here are some pictures that they wanted to share with the board um, uh, regarding the trip and some of the neat things that they saw and you know, were able to participate in. And they were grateful uh, to have that opportunity and they know that um, what's happening here in the classroom does contribute to the success of the program. Anything else? No. Okay. Thank you for that update. Uh, item number six is our public forum. Is there anyone here that is wishing to speak to public forum? We don't have any slips. Okay, we'll move on to number seven, which are reports, and we'll um, start with our superintendent's report. Now, um, um, it's um, a couple of things. Just a note to the board uh, with the uh, principals changing um, uh, here, and they just started work, they will be start working at the end of July. You'll get the uh, parent guardian student handbooks. And, um, and then some of the employee handbooks in August rather than July. They're used to see So expect to see those in August, and, um, and the goal is to have the high school and elementary handbook a little bit more um, uh, consistent. So that's uh, parents can be more uh, uh, We added the third kindergarten section. As, as I uh, informed you in the, in the weekly board reports, we've been moving toward that, hoping to avoid it. But um, we did not avoid it. And with the sections getting up to 28 to 26, it, it was just necessary. It was what's best for kids. So we did advertise, and later in this agenda, you will be um, asked to approve the hiring of a kindergarten teacher, which we're excited um, to have found uh, what we believe is a very qualified uh, individual, younger, but with kindergarten experience, uh, to join us at Valparaiso for a second section. And then she obviously will be under two with Mrs. Carlson, and um, we think that's going to be a very, um, very beneficial to our students. Of course, unfortunately, to try to get the numbers to balance, 
we'd like to uh, move some of the kids who might have been planning on going to Soresto over to Valparaiso. And we're kind of using geographics as one of the main determinants of who we're going to ask to move to Valparaiso. And, uh, we first asked for families to, if, if anybody was interested in volunteering and moving, let us know. But other than that, yeah, they did not. Play. We, we did have one parent and, uh, that wanted to do that. But and and, mm -hmm. and we do have a, a few parents who've expressed that, that you know they would rather not do that, and, and they all have very good reasons for that. that so we I, we recognize that, but we also recognize that to serve our kids well, we're going to have to do something uh, to balance this a little bit. And um, so uh, Steve Rose and Jen Cruz uh, are working on that. We, uh, graciously, Cheryl mapped out the locations of all of where all of our kindergartners sit, and we have four of them that sit in Valparaiso proper, two that sit in um, Raymond, City of Raymond proper, and then 11 in Soresto. So the rest of the uh, 54, 55 kiddos are uh, in, outside of the city, to uh, town, town, villages, if that's of interest to you. But so, uh, so you know, so what we're looking at is that we kids in rural areas. So those decisions are being made. Um, We've had to do that before. Yeah, so that's say. what I've heard. We've been not on their Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and um, and because we've had to do it before, Kinder is obviously uh, familiar and ready. And I love the um, the structure that they've created. They'll they'll oftentimes, especially for core instruction, be reading and maybe even math. They'll look at all all of them over at Valparaiso and put them in groups of, uh, with a, a small group instruction um, collectively. So it's not just Mrs. Carlson kids doing it for just Mrs. Evans. So I think that's going to be very, very powerful. Um, so Mr. I have a question. So yeah. Pretty literally going to ask or make these families actually go to I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of more maintenance. We've asked, yeah. and now we might have to. And how did that go? It went. It went. I mean, people are like, yeah, I'd rather do this long class, so we have to write those good efforts. I mean, a lot of them are rural, so they're writing those school bus anyway, yeah. so it's just taking them to a different place. A lot of them are. Some of them in. Uh, and generally, if they already have a sibling in that given building, then we try to keep it try to keep them there. Yeah. yeah. And so it may be somebody that doesn't and then so they can um, move more easily. Yeah. And sometimes we've had those kids stay in Belden rather than coming back to South Coast. Yeah. I think that's a chance that those kids too. Yeah. But logically it, we can assume this group will probably stay maybe they can keep moving up. You know, unless we have a pretty big exodus which hasn't been our trend. Um, and, and some parents, you know, have other than just sibling, well, here's where my daycare is, or here's where the person who picks them up after school. There's a variety of reasons. Do we you know what the percentage is of our preschool kids that are moving with us in the same form? I'm saying here. Uh, yes, I looked that up, and I thought I put that in a board report. I don't remember it off the top of my head. But maybe I did, because you guys are looking at that. I don't remember reading that. So um, we did. I did look that up, and I'll give it to you again. And, uh, and our three-year-olds that are moving into the four-year-old program, what do we have? You know, what, what, what are we looking at as far as times? Yeah, I'll look that up again to get it back to you. I, I know we uh, we looked at it, and uh, in fact, Megan and Goodness even um, contacted those uh, parents coming into kindergarten who did not participate in our, our preschool to try to get information on why. And she did get a lot of response, but we got some response. And a lot of it was, you know, I go to the country and there was a preschool there and they were going to. Or uh, there was different reasons. And I'll, I, so I have that charted and I'll share it with you. And I, I think I did have that at some point. I don't know, but I'll look at it and get it back to you. Good, good question. Good question. Um, uh, Mr. Kobza, I, I think the board is aware, is um, looking to introduce the use of Square software which just is going to allow us to take debit cards at gates and at concessions. Um, there's a, a fee that's associated with that, but we've also looked at um, our, our, our the potential to grow our revenues. So this is kind of going to be a trial year, and Tony's got some very good record keeping he's uh, doing, and 
you'll be able to report to us whether we think that was a good return or not. So you'll see at, uh, at Gates and um, at concession stand um, iPads and you know everything is swiped and, and you know kind of a sign of the times and and uh, it is the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. They won't take money. No. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure we might you know maybe make more songs. So we'll see. That's the goal. Um, and it comes to five year old with that credit card. Yeah. I don't want that, but I want that, but I want that. <laughs> I want that. Swipe away. $30. Oh! <laughs> you yeah. know, um, and uh, it just stands for reason the cost of the concession stands will be more. Not necessarily because of this, but the price of food. Yeah. Yeah. It's cr crazy. And um, in Tony's research, um, what, in other words, he went um, and talked to um, Mr. Williams. You know, he, he doesn't remember the price of the concession change since he's been here. So it's time, uh, and, and our, our product is more expensive, and it's just unfortunate, but that's what we have to do. Um, Mr. Coates is also looking at how we use our huddle programming, and I think you're all familiar with the software factor huddle. It's commonly used uh, for recording events. And when the pandemic came, um, most many schools uh, made sure that they got on something and they got on huddle. And what we take all of our games in here and we make it available to our public. And we do that free of charge. And we've done that since the pandemic. Well, um, the question for Marina Central and other school districts is can we continue, can we and should we continue to do that free of charge? Because Huddle charges is $2,000 a year to use that software. And so um, that's what um, Tony is um, investigating and looking at more thoroughly. And if you have an opinion on that, feel free to. Yeah, talk to me about it. But um, uh, the other way to do it then is to do a paper paper. So a grandparent at home might have to pay eight dollars to watch the game. But if you gain the person, you have to pay a lot. You pay more than that. Right. Yeah, you pay more than so. that. I mean, if two of us came, well, I, I think the addition is going to be what five dollars a year. So you pay ten. I can't remember. We just approved it the other day. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Well, that is true. And um, it's not a very good picture. You're what you're a ways away. So I don't know if it'll generate that much revenue or not, but just something he has to think about. I think it's a great I think the idea is great. But you agree that it really doesn't cost that much money. I don't know how they're fitting in it, but does it all you know that integration into our screen out here and one down there? Um, or the that, that I don't think they that they're designed to integrate, or if there's really a good reason for them to integrate, you know, because of the whole purpose of it. Um, in an ideal world, I'm just this is just Lynn talking off the cuff. In an ideal world, we might get to a point where we have curriculum and kids doing some uh, broadcasting type curriculum where they go to some of these games. Then you have a different view because you can pan in. Right, I mean, so you can this go face, you can go Facebook camera. Live for a lot cheaper if you have somebody that could be a yeah. camera people that would do that. Yeah. And, um, so schools that are doing that, there are schools doing that. Um, you're I mean, you're paying a sponsor to be there tonight because you know, but but that's a different story. So right now, this is what we have, and it isn't a great view because it's a stationary camera, so it's got to be able to get the whole confine. Um, I, I, I just an idea, uh, you know, to think about this. Right. 
but that looks a little different than um, uh, broadcasting. So anyway, um, and I think I captured all of that. Did I cover all that? And then, yeah. Let me keep going here for the rest of my No, I have one of the questions yeah. um, first. Uh, we have a, a different summer school. Oh, you, you mean, um, uh, okay, I'm sorry, when you said summer school, I was thinking about instructional summer school and seven club uh, child program. We had a week, we had 15 kids, I think, engaged in that uh, opportunity. And um, it went, uh, you know, in talking with Carrie, she said it went well. There's things she would do differently next year with it. Um, she had hoped for a few more kids, to be honest with you, but. Uh, Kind of interested in you know what, what the kinds of things that they would do. You know, yeah, she was going to get a report to. Yeah, to get, we'll, yeah, I'll get one. We'll do. Thank you. Okay, seven one one is our um, monthly update from the ASP, and seven one two um, is part of the board's uh, responsibility to look annually at our uh, strategic goals. And uh, we did have a um, retreat on Monday night um, to look at those things. And I guess Mrs. Johnson, if she could give us a summary of some of those things so our public is aware of you know, the progress that we're making. Absolutely. And so, um, and, and again, the public that log on to our website and go to our agenda can, can find this attachment. It's available to them. Um, and the manner in which I uh, formatted the, the um, document was that in red was uh, my summary uh, going into the meeting of the progress that, that I thought we made and then, and then the board made contribution to that this, through a discussion format at our retreat on Monday and what's in blue then were some of the highlights of our discussion that I was trying to capture for our public and um, so you know and, and we spent uh, the bulk of our time I would say talking about um, the student growth and student achievement and student learning and that's uh, I think reflected in the bullet points that, that, that the board of the public sees here, and that uh, stands to, to stands to reason because that's the main priority of why we exist. Um, but in terms of um, uh, student achievement, student growth, we talked a little bit about the goal itself and was it was this goal worded appropriately? Would there be better ways to write a goal so that administrators and teachers could gather metrics that would help us better gauge our progress? And what we decided, what came out of that discussion was, let's let the principals who are new uh, get their feet wet and look at what we've got, and then get, we'll come back to the board with some potential uh, recommendations or ideas on that. But uh, right now, it, this isn't. This does serve a need, and it does serve our needs. And can it be improved? Possibly, yet to be determined. Um, we, we talked a little bit about our, some of our uh, state assessments uh, and NSPIS assessments. So our performance level seems to be a little bit lower than what we would want. And um, so we all talked about it. We noted that that is true. Uh, in some cases, we're below the state average. Yet our our uh, demographics would not give us a good reason to, to move uh, below the state average. And again, I want to emphasize this is just a single test. So we don't want to put too much uh, all of our age on that. But it is something to, to, to be um, um, attentive to and explore why it is. And so as a board, we talk a lot about why that might be uh, as board administrators. We had a very, I think, um, fruitful discussion on that note. Um, so uh, we talked about um, uh, noting, again, that this is just one test. We want to be intended to educate the whole child. So there's a lot of components of educating our kids. And it's not just, it's really, honestly, not just academic either. And, and you see some of those other areas in some of our later folks, social emotional growth. And um, leadership growth and uh, citizenship, and, uh, those types of things. We talked about our tier one strategies and curriculum, which um, is that, uh, and making sure that we have a guaranteed vi uh, viable curriculum in all of our subject areas. And Kathy, you know, when she's talking about our health curriculum, that's part of this equation. Do we have the curriculum and resources that are aligned to the standards um, to measure our kids with, to instruct with, and, and then to measure our kids with? So, um, and, and we have some work to do in that area as well. And, and I think we've made some strides. We've got uh, the Regional Sciences and Professional Development 
which will lead right into the adoption of new language arts uh, curricular material and, um, and uh, we're on track then to look at uh, math and, and science at one point. So those are important. Um, so we talked about, uh, those are kind of the key things. Make sure that we uh, value and uh, recognize arts as well as athletics. And one way to make it more um, prevalent in the board's mind, academic progress that we're making, maybe for the principals to have it uh, reflected in their monthly reports. Um, so the key areas that I would like to highlight today, if it's okay with you, Dr. Gould, is that goal. And then of course, we talked about recruiting and retaining high quality staff. And, and we are just like everybody else out there in the employer world having to talk about uh, salaries and compensation packages that keep us at, market, at, at the top end of the market and able to attract. So that's, that's a, you know, that nobody's throwing a money tree, uh, as we talked about, but uh, we have to be attentive to how we're going to keep staff. I think the thing that those people do is culminating down there. Well, I I'd like to get yeah I'd like to own a part of that uh, <laughs> property that has the money through, but um, yeah and, and finding ways to celebrate our uh, our successes both academically and otherwise and even our teachers and our staff and for all the good things they can find ways to celebrate that so that was something that we kind of highlighted and then the other goal that I, you know we talked about our resources um, we talked about increased student enrollment. Um, and we, we made progress in that area, keep making progress, use um, our some marketing tools that we have to highlight the great things we're doing. Honestly, uh, uh, it's some, uh, there's a couple of optional elements that we have to, uh, to decline this year. We don't have to live in the play that we're going to want to in the building. And so that's, um, we have great room availability in a different building, but it's split in our family. So things uh, like that, ways to, 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 to try to uh, combat that. Um, facility improvements, as everybody knows, we're working with an architect to do a facility review and we'll see where that takes us. And um, technology, we feel good about our infrastructure and our devices and now making sure we're utilizing them uh, as effectively as possible to enhance the work. And then um, we talked a little bit about, uh, I wanted to go to goal eight, which is a safe learning environment. We spent a lot of time on that, uh, I felt, uh, in our board retreat. Um, uh, rightly so. Uh, noted that you know uh, the safety really starts with kids feeling welcome, accepted, and valued. Here. Um, if you look at the data, a lot of your um, problems when it comes to intruders are oftentimes students or kids are flying or past flying. So um, if they feel good about their experience, that that's a good a step in the right direction. So we spent a lot of time talking about that as a board and um, um, involving parents and community members in those discussions. How can we do that more effectively all the way through the school uh, um, And uh, you're going to see a superintendent's goal uh, to, to what you guys uh, asked, which is uh, making sure we get that, um, uh, that plan for reunification uh, identified and distributed. So thank you for the, the summary. Uh, again, it is these goals that drive the direction that our district is going. And so it's critical that we look at them annually as well as you know, throughout our year um, and, and make sure that we are touching base with them and you know, marching forward getting things accomplished. If it's not written down, it doesn't get done. I mean, these are targets and we want to move towards them. So, I appreciate your uh, summary there, and, and I want to again thank the board um, for their involvement the other night in the discussions because it was valuable, and this is where these things came from. So let's move on then to 7.13, which are the superintendent's goals. Ms. Johnson? Yep. This was also a part of our retreat uh, on Monday night when we talked about goals for the superintendent. and. Um, and so when we go into the 22-23 school year, some of the things that I am to uh, work on and uh, intend to work on, and I'm not going to go through all the performance indicators, but obviously being, uh, with this being my second year, make sure that I uh, create a physical presence within the schools, the communities, um, and, uh, and across the state as, representative of, uh, as a representative of Rainbow Central Public Schools and our presence 
uh, in the bigger educational uh, community. So that's one of my goals. The second goal is, um, you know, again, back to that learning process or learning environment which in which every student has an opportunity to be successful and succeed. And we talked about uh, in that rehash some of the things that we will be about, I will be about, and I won't be alone. You know, I don't, uh, some of this is done with the assistance of my administrative team, but we're going to make some, um, some we're going to, I'm going to say make some changes, but we're going to be able to reduce some additional information and make progress on, on those goals, and we'll see that with the efforts. So that's um, part of the, the goal that's laid out there. Um, continue working on the uh, facility strategic plan and, and, and for this year, you know, uh, working with uh, DBH, our architect, and our um, um, uh, 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 financial advisors in, in what, what, bringing information, getting it to the board, uh, making sure that the community is engaged in some of that um, information exchange and um, helping you to find your way to whatever decisions you're going to make and then following through with that. So that's uh, part of my goal structure. Uh, and then um, safety protocols is obviously a, a priority for us and the reunification plan is you know, uh, first and center with just safety concerns. So we'll continue to, uh, I will continue to uh, do some work on, on that front and it starts with uh, uh, my attendance at a reunification drill in Fremont uh, next week. So just to kind of see how other schools are doing the same drills. Any questions? Thank you for uh, the development there. I think these are uh, very meaningful goals. And what the board would like to do is what we had in the past um, with our superintendent is that it's a quarterly update. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be real long, but some bold statements on the progress that you're making. And, and uh, we'd like to listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to do that. And I think it's important for the public to see what progress is. Very good. Thank you. Uh, there are some upcoming uh, important dates that are noted under 7 uh, 1.4. Uh, the first day for our new teachers is August 9th. All staff will be coming back on August 12th. Student first day is August 17th. Uh, the board has an area membership meeting in Fremont, and that date is August 24th. Uh, we also uh, are noting that the um, NASP component of uh, Spark Data Solutions, who runs our uh, technology here with our agendas and so forth, um, is having an, an event on September 17th. And then there's uh, an NASB School Boards Association Facilities and Construction Workshop in Carney on September 22nd. And that may be something that would be very valuable uh, here for our facilities committee and any other board members uh, wanting to attend. So, uh, think of, look at your calendars, think about that, and, and contact us uh, in the Johnson uh, with regard to your ability to attend. Uh, so, these report. Yeah, um, just a couple, couple of uh, things for, for the board and for the, the public. Um, Jared and I uh, applied for and obtained a $2,000 uh, SFM, um, which is our return to grant uh, for slips, trips, and falls specifically. And the dollars that the two thousand dollars that we'll do that we will obtain will be utilized to defray the cost. We got an angled room to attach to the bobcat, which will allow us to clean the snow more effectively. And not only snow, but even the gravel and rock, which um, is on our cement blocks and all our slip trip uh, hazards. So um, did that. I wanted to let you know that the RTU unit um, was supposed to have been placed over the senior wing on Tuesday. And I don't, I, you know, honestly, it, I think it was placed. I didn't look to see. Oh, no, I did. I had pictures. I was going to send them to you. I forgot to do that. It was placed. So uh, just a little bit of uh, follow-up items there and hooking it up uh, to be done by Rasmussen. The concrete work, um, as Bill we talked about earlier, is complete, and it looks really nice. The heat pump at Valparaiso, you might recall we ordered that kind of more pencil. That has been delayed this time, but it is in and um, installed. Uh, the custodial staff is always in working really to get the campus ready and 
you could see that uh, when we came in today, we were a little concerned about where we were going to fit in here because we were rising. But the floors are uh, done, the gym floors are finished, and it's looking good in the time off those campuses. Uh, we don't have a summary back from our adjuster on that, or the student that failed the storm yet. Um, Lauren, uh, one of our DPAM floor, was a uh, uh, family painter, uh, 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 head on all of our things, basically, it's looking at what the house said. I, I just assume everything is pretty back and uh, uh, working on that. Uh, Chris Walls, who is from Garden Company, I don't know if you've seen all those, had been there on all of our roads and um, has formed his own uh, summary report of our group, and we'll see how that correlates or compares to what our adjustment has to do. And we're still looking, you might recall, from years ago, we're looking to, to, to re that corner struck from the El Cerezo building is sitting in the yard over there, and we were intending to get a vendor who would build that into a, uh, you know, a, a structure. Uh, we said bring around it, shore it up. We cannot buy the soul to do it. We've had two different people said yes, and they both backed out. Now we're a year and a half at least later. Still don't know what we're doing, but I, I, just to say we're working on it, and, and then we'll have to go to a plan B, which our plan B is. It just kind of sits in the landscape area somehow, and uh, it's out of the way, so it's not a trip as we're in the yard, and it doesn't get short up. That, that's probably the best we can do with the option. But we think there may be some hesitancy because it is a, uh, uh, it's heavy, but it's also, a, a, I would say, a limestone type. It flakes. It, it probably is, a, is it, maybe not real, uh, it might be hard to work with. A, a, a former teacher who had some of the case studies would be a person that would be Okay, maybe that is a lot of water. And, uh, you know, for the public out there, we know that they do it. I don't know. I think he's all over the place. You need equipment to do that, so yeah. you're going to have to, yeah. But yeah. maybe he knows some of it, so then yeah. you're going to quite really. Okay, well, thank you for that update. Any other questions? Well, as far as dates, uh, the next meeting with the architect and uh, still planning. Is that right? Yeah, still planning. In fact, I just uh, talked to. Um, Roger and Cleve, uh, well, it was yesterday, and um, they don't, they aren't ready to give me a date. They're looking, they're, in their mind, our next date with our community is going to be mid-August to early September. They wanted to know when I thought our, 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 our would be best time to meet with our community. Well, um, I, I kind of, I don't know. I'm looking at my ca our calendars. Boy, once you get to activities in August, it all heats up, and it's, we're about there. So, um, so if that's what you're asking, I'm going to say late August or early September is our next meeting with the members. With the goal of having a decision um, by November and then we have to Was that your question? Let's move through our board committee reports. Seven twenty one committee on the Maryland Civics. Yeah, we need to do next. Seven twenty two consultation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the bus grant is due on um, August thirtieth. Uh, for the clean diesel grant, I think I told you guys before, um, it's going to be a little bit more competitive than normal, and they're going to favor uh, more closely economic schools that are still in the So we need to issue that grant soon, uh, or to complete that grant. I need to complete that grant. And um, toward that end, we, we budgeted for a bus for this fiscal year. We're not going to buy it out this fiscal year, but we should have some reserves that I'm hoping that we will, which is how important we want to do it transfer to depreciation 
because the bus will actually be paid for out of next year's budget, and hopefully that grant will be for $20,000. Regardless of what we do here, uh, if we decide to build and go to the central side, or even if we don't, um, you know, whatever you do with facilities is going to take years in the making. Yeah. So, and we tend to try to buy a bus every year. So even if this is still a 65 passenger, if we want to slip up to a 75, I think we have ample time to do that. Okay. And you did buy 75. 75. 71. 70. Okay. 72. And then when you slip up, you're in the 80s. They're, they're, they're big. Uh, drivers don't like, love driving those. Somebody wants kind of the, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I, my previous experience is that's about where they want to stay. Okay. Um, Just one of three. three uh, you ever driven the name? No. Awesome. Yeah. I just, I just see something. Well, I'm not going to have to say that. That one's the gray house. What? That You're not talking to coach. No. <laughs> no, they're just talking the bigger, the bigger one. Yeah. So, yeah. What's one of the banner chains we're going to go? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, hey, it's a good idea. I like so it. So my point is, um, even if we do just do the the, the the seventy-one this year, I think in the years ahead we can we can evaluate yeah. that. But but our committee can discuss that. Just keep it quiet. Yeah. Seventy-three-three finance. We're going to be we're going to be ramping up real quick here. Uh, Peggy and I are just working to finish. Well, we're not working to finish the budget. We're working on the budget. It is going to all coalesce for many things right here in the middle of August. Uh, I'm starting to panic a little bit because it, it, because of the, the way the budget rolls out. And you might recall we have that joint meeting that we have to have uh, with Lancaster County because of the new legislation. And so, bing, 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 finance committee is going to have to uh, meet before we get evaluations. And then, as soon as valuations are out, finance committee will have to meet again and say yay. And then the board will have to have a, a, a budget workshop, assuming you want a budget workshop again. I don't know if you do. And, um, and then, in the midst, but that can happen until after the 20th, because that's when valuations come back. And then we're at 25th, uh, 20. 4th, 25th of August, and um, the joint meeting is going to be in there somewhere. So by then, your budget has to be done. Right about as soon as those valuations are out, your budget has to be done because you have to assume you're going to be having for the next one year. It's just, it, it's just, and they have to advertise for seven days in advance. So it is brutal, 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 brutal. And um, so we will need to be within the next couple of weeks, and I'll, I'll get a hold of the finance committee. And, um, but we can't make something and I'm sure that we want to make something. Seven three four facilities committee. Anything else for Mr. Franco? Yeah, we can also um I have a we will probably back on that point, but I still need to look at it. Okay. 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 Negotiations committee. We have action later in this agenda. Yeah. Um, we move on to 736 curriculum at this time. Um, 737 policy, again, we're not at this time. Uh, there was no public forum, so we'll jump over 74. And I uh, had asked at our last meeting to add uh, safety onto our agenda. And so 7.5 is uh, our safety report. And uh, Ms. Johnson, can you give us an update? I can, I can a little bit. I, I met, Scott and I met with Deputy uh, Pitts this morning uh, just to go over a myriad of 
safe thing for me. Got it. I'll get some minutes out to you as soon as I get them um, released and, and or get them finalized from our meeting this morning. But um, talked about um, just a, a lot of different safety things, inclusive, especially at this campus, because he doesn't uh, work in Rogers now. So we're including um, the traffic flow in the high school parking lot. Yeah, and the ways in which we can improve that, make it a one way traffic flow out at the end of the day versus some cross traffic. So, we're going to try something different there. We talked um, about uh, numbering our windows as well as our doors, numbering our doors inside as well as outside. We talked about um, making sure our cameras are all in working order and that the uh, screen in the offices um, are capturing the cameras uh, like they were designed to. That those that have we talked a little bit about, um, we talked a lot about communication and uh, the communication sites. We talked a lot about our protocol. As you know, we use the um, standard response protocol, which is by I love you guys. But what the current research is telling us and what's in our plan, what well, in our, we conversed apparently about is way back in 2019, because I found some documentation on this. That um, along with um, when you come to the, you know, there's five standard protocols. You know, there's evacuate, um, like if there's a gas leak in the school, and there's a shelter, like if there's a tornado, there's um, um, hold in place, like if there's a medical situation in hallways, you know, with kids passing. Um, and uh, then there's lock out. That might be if there's danger outside and we don't want people going out. And then there's lock down. Which is really what yonders most of our attention because that's the intrusion. So lockdown is danger inside. And so um, we spent a lot of time on lockdown uh, in our discussion this morning with Deputy Pitts. And, and, um, and the current thinking on lockdown is um, in many instances, uh, people are given permission to, to evacuate. If you know that there's a gunman and they're the other side of your campus and your campus is this big, if you can evacuate to avoid the problem, you should do so. So we talked about what that looks like in rural Brennan Central, uh, the school that's sitting out, uh, not in a city structure, because you typically don't um, evacuate in a vehicle. Because that poses problems for uh, emergency personnel training. What do you say about the officers? Uh, talked about that too. And he said, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, and he said, but um, you know, they're, you know, uh, Brad, it only goes a certain way, and there's some there's some breaks in that there um, because I you know we explored that uh, or I didn't have time. I guess you're going to need to know where that breaks. And I know. I and, and, only knows about the one that for cross country closures. Yeah, right there's a break a little further above, the and then over here on this side, there's some ways we can do it. We might have to even create a, a gated break, frankly. Um, so we talked about some of that. We don't have any good answers. Just talked about, and what we did talk about is uh, Dr. Or Assistant Deputy Ben Hawkins is intending to get a multi multi district committee together, and from there, then we go to a multi agency committee on our end, which is um, fire and rescue from um, a both that would respond to any of our districts, along with our county sheriffs, along with uh, school personnel at the table. And oftentimes that's another place to discuss that from a, a, from a career, you know, from perspectives. They're different than state patrol. So that's kind of where we're gonna go. We're gonna get an answer to that. To say I have it right now, I don't, but um, so we're working on it. So I think those are the key things of what we what we talked about this morning and um, and that leads into our to our other plans. Yes. How does the effort that we've had in place where we had the bow here to build the fire? Yeah, right. That's, it. that's that multi agency that's right, what I'm talking about. So we need to be critical. Yeah. We need to do another one. Yeah, they're not going to have to bring up the speaker idea and then have to put that fit in. Yes. You mean, um, like for uh, the doctor? Um, thank you. Yeah. It made it a little bit. Um, I think that, yes, we talked about that a little bit too. And, and um, Deputy Pitts will be doing the presentation for all of our staff on our first uh, work day back. Uh, going over all these protocols uh, as well, and so um, her, her, as far as Dr. Kaja is concerned, I think we'll first meet with um, our core team here before we go right to uh, our staff. So yeah, that's on my agenda too. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
uh, the other piece that, that, which was interesting to me oh, was this, uh, uh, wet fold. Yeah. Wet, 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 Crazy. NSAA uh, has re, uh, we're required, I don't know if required is the right word, but uh, a lot of attention is being paid to making decisions about whether to practice a plane. And so there's a device that helps you gauge the safety of uh, the heat index uh, relative to humidity and other things, and that's what this device does. Um, NSA paid for each school district to have a device, and um, you have to obtain training on it, which you told me to do, and um, there we go. Just another piece of that safety plan. Mm -hmm. Did it last somebody out in the or in Carney? Did you turn it over Oh, turf is terrible. I, I, I don't. Did you play? Yeah, see, I, I don't know what that means. It's 150 degrees. It's dry heat. Well, I guess that might lead us to believe that we're right. It's going to have to be pretty bad. Not really. I don't know. But we'll, I'll keep you informed as I, I learn more and tell you more. Thank you. Old business. Anything from the board members? Moving on then to new business, uh, discuss, consider, and take necessary action uh, to improve staff resignations. We have uh, Patty Diploma, who is our head cook at the high school, who has submitted a resignation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. Roll call, please. Mr. Bright. Yes. Mr. Blanchard. Yes. Berkeley. Yes. Mr. Laney? Yes. Mr. Mikulka? Yeah. Dr. Blue. Yes. 9.2, discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve staff appointments. And uh, we have uh, Hannah Evans as our uh, additional kindergarten teacher in Valparaiso. Can you give us any yeah. information? Yeah. Hannah uh, has two years of experience, um, um, both in, uh, in Colloquial settings, but uh, kindergarten was her uh, her most recent year of experience. She recently got married, which is why it's with Lindy Evans. And um, and um, she, so she, she's. Uh, I think the structure that we've created with um, the, the mentorship of Ms. Carlson was great for this young teacher. She's she's got solid knowledge of the kindergarten curriculum and how to implement it. That's been a lot of So she's uh, resides in Waverly. She decided to uh, local graduate or local graduate? No, no. Um, oh, wait, Harry, I'm just pushing my mom. Did you interview the other day? I, for some reason, I'm going to think she's from Hastings, but don't quote me. Okay, sorry. Should we? She's a Hastings college graduate. Okay. Yeah, I know that. These folks to come in and meet us going forward. A lot of my residents. I have no idea who they are. Yeah. yeah. We Why don't we used to do that? Uh, yeah. Before the school year started, uh, we would have a little uh, like sandwich or something. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> Everybody knows. Okay, 9.3 discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve an amendment to the 22 23 teachers negotiated agreement. So, yeah, um, this, um, this, this amendment comes to uh, it comes through the committee and it, it actually evolved out of the Schedule B committee. That and when we met to talk about uh, some uh, different Schedule B recommendations, we also talked about, you know, uh, when when teachers are asked, that there's a certain rate of pay that you get when you're asked to do flow for the clock or, you know, or that flow the clock or take uh, admissions. But there's sometimes need for us to ask someone to come and be a supervisor, be responsible for some uh, disciplining students, redirecting parents if need be, taking money, counting money, logging money, a, a little higher level of responsibility. And uh, the teachers, particularly at, on that committee level, as well as myself, felt like that needs to be compensated a little differently than just some of the 
take it before I want. And so we put that into the negotiated agreement because it's in there. So that's how you have to handle it. And so it requires an addendum. So both the uh, education association and the negotiation committee uh, this is passed through them and now it becomes. So are these event supervisors in lieu of a principal or do you have to be in here? Yeah, it could, it, Brad, it could be a couple of different lines. It could be in lieu of, it could also be in addition to if you are fortunate to have a, a big event gotcha. and you need um, some more bodies and then you need to be responsible by making decisions on that. So Ed's requiring uh, with regard to um, have we do we do Harriet um, uh, we do we have um, um, Mr. Carroll um, who will be an assistant AD do I think we'll need this very frequently no as, as we talked at the committee level maybe we won't need it at all but if you look at our calendar even going into August and September there's time where we have three, three events on the calendar and um, there's only so many administrators, and uh, there's always an IEP there for you. So that yeah, takes a man out. And there's typically, there's oftentimes issues people have. So, and with Tony coaching, and that's certainly a part of this, uh, with Tony coaching, he's not always available at the time. So um, we all agree at, at this committee meeting that we have a mechanism at least that gives us options. Um, that's not to say that you should expect to see a, a bunch of expenditures out here, but that will not be our first line in a course of action. It will be the last. And since we're starting all our so to speak, we can be slain here. Is that going to be all the administration? Is it not necessarily the all the administration? Yes. Yeah, I think you're asking me, um, will all administrators do supervision? And um, and when I talk to uh, my administrative team, we will all do supervision, not to the same extent or degree. Um, the, the bulk of the, the bulk of the supervision will rest with uh, uh, the AD, the high school principal. Um, uh, uh, Lynn will be in there. So Lynn and Amanda will, uh, will be in there, and so will Steve and Deb. But I'm not. Steve and Deb will not do the same number as they done. Uh, but they, they both expect to be at this, you know, expect to be in every home football game. You know, the elementary uh, principal every home football game. And then there's some junior high and some more up for their assistant or assistant. We, we aren't going to try to put out the elementary principal's probably the number one in charge of high school. Not that they couldn't do it, but um, well, that's just how it was. I think they get a little better quality there as far as what no, and nor do I. And so we're going to try to create a better balance and a, a functional balance. Um, yep. Yep. I, I, could, I agree. I, I just want to make it very clear to you that uh, it would not be my expectation that it would be equal because I, that's not. The boss. Yeah. Yep. I agree. And everybody I've hired gets that same fee. Everybody needs to do something. I'll make a motion to approve that. Is that a motion? Yep. Second? I'll second. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Berglund? Yes. Mr. Laney? Yes. Mr. Coker? Yes. Dr. Gould? Yes. Mr. Reichert? Yes. And Harriet, um, on 90.1, I don't think we ever did a motion to approve hiring uh, Anna. We talked about her, and then I don't think we did a motion. 92. Excuse me. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Laney? Yes. Mr. Holcomb? Yes. Dr. Gould? Yes. Mr. Brackett? Yes. Mr. Langer? Yes. Thank you for that assistance. We go now to 9.4. Discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve the 2022-23 school lunch prices. Um, so what's provided for the board here and, and the public, I think, uh, is an attachment. Uh, so uh, at the front end, I'm making these recommendations. We're recommending that the lunch prices, well, they're all going up. 
Uh, with the lunch price for the elementary be two dollars and seventy five cents, the secondary be two dollars and ninety cents. Uh, that the reduced meals take forty cents. That actually stays the same, and that the adult go up to three seventy five. And then for breakfast, we're recommending that the elementary be one seventy five, the secondary be one seventy five. Reduced stays at thirty cents, and the adult goes to two fifty. The spreadsheet I shared with you shows us our last year prices, our this year's recommendation. And then what some of the surrounding schools are doing for 22-23. Uh, I just wanted to build a, you know, an awareness and both for myself, frankly, uh, and then for you, that you know we're in the hunt somewhere. And different different schools have different, uh, especially with lunches. You know, if you're not comparing an apple to an apple, uh, uh, a school with high uh, poverty, it, you're going to see some different uh, charges there. And then some some programs uh, are running high cash. And so if the state doesn't like that, and so they want you to you know, spend it out. Oh, are we? We are running right at the brink, yeah. Um, but you know, I, um, our the food, even though we're up in our prices here, our food costs are going to be considerably higher. I guess that's really cheap for me. It's well, reasonable. It's, um, and more than reasonable, yeah. And then our employee costs are reasonable. Yeah. If I could eat for three seventy-five a day, I'd be super happy. Yeah, but Brad, um, to your point, Just say. if we stay flush at the end of this year, then I think our parents can expect that we won't be raising it every yeah. year. We haven't raised it for a, a, a while. You're, You're just trying, trying to stay here. Right? We're trying, trying to stay there, and, 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 stay there. and, and I don't want to get upside down because right. you really don't want to get to the point. Uh, the general fund does subsidize in, in non uh, in non obtrusive ways our, our uh, hot lunch fund anyway because um, some of our trash, electrical. There's portions of that that could come out of hot lunch. We bear that all on the general fund, or hold of that on the general fund side still. Um, but my point is, to Brad's point, we, we are healthy in this fund. Um, um, but um, we want to stay that way. Yeah? We don't want to be, there's this happy medium you have. Yeah. And, uh, so if something in the kitchen goes bad or something that comes out of this fund. Yeah, very, it does. Very and they're expensive items. Right. right? Um, but uh, if, if we get too flush, then then uh, you, you will know about it. And, well, lunch salaries come out of this too. They do. They do. Okay. They do. But then I think we have to note that the past couple of years we've had opportunities for free lunches. Free lunches. Yeah. Thanks for noting that. I'm glad you remembered that because both Patty and I discussed this. I think we can expect the revenues that we've seen in the past couple of years from the federal government. We're not going to see those this year. Um, and so um, where we we stayed healthy, even though food went up this year, partly because of the federal um, assistance. And I think that's going to look different when meals aren't free next year. So, um, and, and, and with that point, I think it's going to be important that we make sure that our students are doing it. Because, you know, we can't learn if we don't help the Make that initial. You can't force you can't. No, I, I understand that, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a balance. Yeah, there is a balance. And uh, I would say to you, uh, we're there's a couple of things we do for that. Harry, that's a good point, and that's something we all have to be cognizant of. Not just food, really, really not food service because they personally would not know. It's the supervisors, it's the, the counselors, the teachers, the people are around. <coughs> And um, well, and the opportunity to, to um, allow our parents or encourage our parents who need assistance to put it in an application yeah. or uh, assistance, and, and you know that helps us in a multitude of ways, um, not only for their child or children um, being able to you know make make uh, uh, themselves uh, nourished, uh, but but also to help on the other end of it. When you look at our, our redu free and reduced uh, percentages of our student population, I mean, right now our percentage is 21, right around 21%. We always we will burn that range. Well, we, we, we used to be down 17, 18, probably even lower than that. I mean, going back a lot. Yeah. 25 percent approaching 25. Yeah, it's really 21, 22. Um, um, but Dr. Gould is right, and I, in the letters I wrote early on last year, which is a little concerning for this year, um, all of our federal grant monies are based on um, 
poverty numbers which is established by great many of participation. So it is just critical. Not that I want, but you know, if you can use that assistance and you might qualify for it, you should fill out the application. And there's nothing um, wrong or you shouldn't think uh, anything about that. that. Just do it. How do we uh, communicate that? Well, that's everybody. In the, that's what I was just All of the, uh, uh, in the, the, in the messages that I'll send the parents if they can hear that will be in there repeatedly. It was in every one of my uh, Mustang updates. And, well, I think maybe a banner across the top of the website at the beginning of the year when sure. you know those kinds of things are, are happening that, that people see it or on the social media page. So we'll, we'll keep worrying about that, but uh, all good reasons for what what mm -hmm. recommendation you see here. And thanks for remembering. Okay, so we need a motion then for 9.4. I'll make it. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Lenny? Yes. Mr. Polka? Yes. Dr. Gould? Yes. Mr. Breitwright? Yes. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Mr. Berkman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. 9.5 discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve our milk bids. Yeah. Well, uh, again, um, we try to get at least two bids. There's not very many companies doing milk for schools anymore. And um, you see the historical perspective that Cheryl provided, which I think is very helpful. We only have one bid this year, and it's from Hyder. And you'll notice we, yeah, milk went up a lot. We did not increase the milk price. And um, that's a purposefully and intentional. We want kids to have milk. And so, our, our, you know, whatever. This is this is where we're at. And I, 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 you know, we don't have much option on the Is there a motion to approve Highland Dairy Foods for our milk? I'll make it. One second. Roll call, please. Mr. Matolka? Yeah. Dr. Gould? Yes. Mr. Bright Yes. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Mr. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Lanning? Yes. Motion carried. 9.6 discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve. Policy 5416, which is student fees. Um, every year, um, boards of education have to review um, uh, their student fee policy and what's in front of you. Our policy has no uh, need for change, but the administrative regulation, which captures the fees they provide, or potentially charge analysts, have to be reviewed. And so that's what's in front of you today is administrative regulation 5416A. Um, which is associated with the student fee policy. And so you're looking at the student fee schedule. I restructured it a little bit. I felt like there were some things um, that are fee driven that, that weren't captured in our, our regulatory document previously. And I think you just have to be careful to capture all the possibilities for your public in your uh, regulatory document. <coughs> None of the prices you're seeing here have increased, but it's just, um, uh, there's clarity here. Yeah, that's yeah. And, and, and I think that was, uh, I was appreciative to see that. So thank you for uh, looking at it as a, as a matrix or a chart table. Whatever. And there's some things that we don't even control that the kids will let the kids parents know. For example, dual enroll, it's not a fee we charge. It's the college charges that they pay it to them. But at least parents can look at this and expect I'm not going to charge this charge. Questions? Sir, motion? I'll make a motion to approve all school courses, please. I'll second. Roll call, please. Director Gould? Yes. Mr. Breitwright? Yes. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Mr. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Polka? Yes. Motion carried 9 7. Uh, discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve propane bids. Well, um, uh, uh, again, Cheryl uh, does a bulk of the work. Bids out, and so uh, the bid history document, which is the fourth down there, and again, not, not all of our public can see that, um, talks about where the bids came in this year. And it's interesting to note the highlighted yellow ones are the ones that you know who's gotten bid over the course of the years. And um, so um, you, well, you can see the numbers, and uh, the most uh, the lowest price on protein came from uh, Farmers uh, Co op. Um, this year, so uh, it'll be the 
more to the side. I think you know, historically you've been looking at this. Right. Yeah, I don't mind the way they're all over, they're all viable, they're all yeah. quality. Um, quality. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve farmers come up? Uh, second. I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brightrest? Yes. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Mr. Bergman? Yes. Mr. Lange? Yes. Mr. Polka? Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Nine point eight. Discuss, consider, and take necessary action to approve the date for budget workshop. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. That's where we're at. And I, get, I put three dates out there. Boy, it's getting hairy. The twenty fourth is the regional meeting, and um, I'm out of. I'm supposed to be out of town for the twenty second and twenty fifth. Then I'm the thirtieth. Doesn't scare me as long as the board is a really um, a, a trusting of the finance committee because they're going to do most of this legwork when it gets to the full board in a workshop setting hopefully the finance committee has already said yeah this is what we think is best um, so I, i'm not afraid of the 30th i can't think of the reason I'm afraid of the 30th, but, um, and the only thing that could creep up is obviously if uh, that's when the joint meeting is i got it i need to i would like to get to that or it's the public hearing the joint agency public here. Do we have any knowledge about what they're looking at? Um, no, and I meant to call them today. We, we had preliminarily talked about the uh, last week in August being on target by, but as more of this legislation has unfolded, that's pretty darn difficult. So, so would, it, would it be smart to wait? And it might be at our August meeting. Yeah, it would be. If we're going to go that late, it's not going to get it. Would be. If it's okay with you guys. Safe, I believe, or after. They're after. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're after. They are. Yeah, that's fine with me, and I'm yeah. totally uh, good with that. We're just wait to August, and, but keep it in the in, on your great mind. Is there no action there? of our next regular Board of Education meeting, which is Wednesday, August 10th. Is there a motion to approve that date? I make a motion to approve it. Your second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Blanchard? Yes. Mr. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Lange? Yes. Mr. McCulloch? Yes. Dr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Director? Yes. Item number 11 is adjourned. All in favor of adjourning our meeting signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. It is adjourned. Thank you. All right.